I had an idea for this picture when I saw it. It was taken by a good friend of mine, Nigel Nichols. And uh, when I looked at it, I thought, you know, what, what can you do with it? And I came up with the idea of an oil painting. But we're not going to be using any of the filters. We're going to be using, in with the blur tool, the smudge tool. Now you can do this in all versions of Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop Elements here, but you can do it in CS, whatever, right the way through. It works in all versions of Photoshop. Right, we have got the smudge tool. Let's take a look at the menu bar. There's the brush. It's a soft edge brush. It's a 60 pixel soft edge brush. We've got the strength, which I think the default is 50%. And it's this is the important thing here, it's the finger painting. This is what we're going to be doing. Right, let's take a look. Come into the Layers panel. Command J, Control J to duplicate the background layer. Next, we're going to drop straight into the picture using Command Spacebar, Control Spacebar, zooming in. We're now in at 100%. Now, as things stand, as soon as I click down, you'll notice the way it goes in. It puts in a black mark there and it's actually quite strong using Command Z to undo that. Now, we are going to be using shortcuts through this, and I'll show you the reason why. Coming across, taking a look at the smudge tool here, it's the letter R is the shortcut for the smudge tool. If we come up, taking a look at this one here, the eyedropper tool, it's the letter I. So if we press down I, we can now change the color of the foreground. If I press the letter R, you can see I've now got my smudge tool back and we can come in and we can start painting with the same color. Looks pretty good. But let's change the brush as well. I'm going to right click. That brings up the brush panel. Basic brushes. We're going to change to wet media brushes. This brush here I find is particularly good. I think it's called something like, oh, there it is. Dry brush on a towel. Now that sounds good, doesn't that? Right. So we're using our dry brush on a towel. And if we just increase the size of the brush, using the right hand square bracket. Now coming into the picture we can click and we can drag it out and you can see it gives that nice sort of paint to the effect there following the areas down and around like this. So just coming, you can see the way we're introducing color around but if you sweep around you'll notice the way you can begin to blend it in as well and it's that blending in of the colors that I really like. So coming around like this clicking down there putting in that foreground color we picked up and we can come around like this and there it is. You can see in the first few strokes that we can really change the look of this picture. You've got that really nice sort of painterly effect going through here. Now this is one of these techniques. The more time, the more effort you put into it, the better it's going to look. So you know, take your time doing it. You can rush it. You can almost do it in one mighty great sweep, which doesn't always work out. So I will be pausing the video throughout this just to show you various different techniques we can use. Let's change the colors, slightly darkening it down. So that letter I followed by the letter R. Now just bringing this up and across like that and I blend it and the rest in. The other thing is don't do too much because we're using this. If you do something you make a mistake you think that doesn't look pretty good or well, it doesn't look very good even. <laughs> if you press Command Z, Control Z you can undo it. Whereas if you've done a lot and you then do the same thing. You're going to undo a lot of the hard work you've put in. Right, I'm going to continue doing this just a little bit longer. And so I'll tell you what, let's just change the, to that color there, pressing the letter R. Just coming down, I'll just do the nose part with you and just round like this. Again, just clicking every so often. Just breaking up the surface as well just a little bit over the edges like that, just to give that a slightly uneven look to it. Round like this. Right, I shall continue doing the rest of the skin area, and I'll come back and we'll take a look at some of the other bits and pieces as we're working our way through this oil painting effect. Right, down around this area here, I've just done the other side of the face, and just coming down to this part, you'll notice there's a few sort of uh, little skin blemishes. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the color by pressing I on the keyboard. Picking up uh, that color tone there will do nicely. You'll notice the foreground color changing again. Pressing the letter R, we're back to the smudge tool. Now just clicking down over the top of this a number of times, we're just putting in the color itself. I'm actually using a mouse, so just clicking down and around where we got those red parts there. Now coming in, now blending it in like this. And there we go. So we've just introduced that skin tone that we've got in the rest of the 
you know, from that area there so it's going to blend in round we come like this just given that some now just clicking down just put in some brush marks let's pick up a slightly darker tone that there looks pretty good pressing R again and you can see we can just blend it through just a little bit of color round to the edges something like that will do nicely right just coming across and breaking up the colour again with the moustache what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it to the end here picking up this nice colour like that yeah, no, perhaps a little bit lighter that'll do nicely got it pressing R again this time dropping the opacity down to 20% by pressing 2 on the keyboard coming in and clicking down and just coming round this and you'll notice that we can come in and just paint that through like that's looks pretty good like the effect that's having just taking it up into round there just notice a little part I've missed out on around here will do nicely coming down now into the beard itself again just taking sweeps down following the the contours that we've got going on with the beard so it's round this part like that now just coming up blending this through now when you've got the 20% opacity the more you go over it the more you're going to start to so blend it in I'm also going to do the beads here this is with the 20% I've kept the same color but just down around that part here you can see the way we can sort of blend this in and that plaits with a part there and down to these beads so again just using that same opacity it just allows us to keep a little bit of the detail and through we come up to this area here right I'm going to continue with the beads for just a second you can always change the color as well if you want to introduce a bit of a slightly lighter tones or whatever so just click in putting in the colors I'm going to continue with the beads and I'll be back to you in just a second right so just finish finishing off the beads there let's take a look at the eyes while we're at it we're now at 200 percent you can see I'm still using the same brush but just reducing it down in size using the left hand square bracket pressing the letter I picking the color up from here so you notice the way the colors change press the letter R back we come we're in at 20 percent opacity yeah let's give the try on that and round we come just painting in this area here just dragging it down because the eyelashes were coming through there round we come and there it is that looks pretty good like that right coming across the other eye keeping that same color blue and again round we come and with the 20 percent opacity it just allows us to be a little bit more sort of selective just blending that through that eyelash there and it is all about just blending those colors in together right something else I'd like to do with this is if we just come in I'm going to click in the foreground color here and I'm going to take this up into this area like that click OK to it dropping the size of the brush down I'm going to drop the size of the brush using the left hand square bracket to here and I'm going to click down a number of times just around this area like that now just blending that through so clicking down the one so click down several times to get the color in first of all like this clicking down again you just <laughs> notice the thumbnail I just saw the thumbnail flashing in the corner of my eye there so you can see when I'm clicking down when you see the thumbnail flash so round we come like this there just a bit of a catch light and coming up to this one again just clicking down a number of times putting in the color and then just blending it through like that you can see as you blend it through you begin to blur it in so let's just blur that in a little bit more like this and there it is if we just zoom out you can see those catch lights there just making all the difference to the picture like that right so zooming out using alt or option spacebar taking a look at the background 
OK, moving on with the background, what we're going to do first of all is just come across. I'm going to increase the size of my brush so we can actually see it. So using the right hand square bracket, take it up. Don't take it too big. If you take it too big, you tend to get that, you pull it out, you get a bit of a lag. So I'm now going to come, I'm going to press I, picking up the black, and pressing the letter R, back we come. Now Nige has thrown the background nicely out of focus. By the way, I'm just going to press 4 to give my strength back to 40%. So just zooming in, and with the background nicely out of focus like this, it allows us just to be able to sort of play a little bit more. And with that color, I can click over here, and you can see the way I can just darken this down. Now I can blend it in. So it just gives us that nice effect that we can start to bring through on this here. Just clicking down, putting in the dark areas. And now we can come in, we can start to blend them in with the rest of the picture love the way that works in there just coming up over this as well so blending it in with the hair dark up on the side then zooming it across not worried about the way I've just gone into the hair area because we can pull that back up just like this little dark patch there great just changing the direction pulling it back and forth swirling it round you can get a bit of a wispy look to it that can work well trying it coming down round this area of the hair here and in down round the area of the hair there releasing it and just coming down again blending it in with the sides of the face and you can see that oil painting effect come together really nicely there is a very cunning plan that I have and it's uh, something when I first I did this technique oh, ages ago and um, there's something else that I've now discovered that works really well with this and I'll be showing you that in just a little while but it's a really cunning plan to change the picture completely coming over that area there so I'll just drop the opacity down to 20% let's come back up pressing 4 to give me back my 40% clicking down because it was the background I was dealing with round we come and just swirling that in like this you see we've got a little bit of the lag there, that's what I was talking about. I think if we went any bigger with the um, brush size, you'd get even more pronounced lag. So if you are experiencing a bit of delay, just drop the size of your brush down. Round, I've already done the beads here, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. But down and around, there we are. Okay, just coming down around the area of his uh, costume here, his pirate outfit. Using the 40%, I've changed the colour just so we've got that lighter tone. But just coming down around these parts, I've done all the hair area now, leaving where the beads are. Oh, look, missed a bit here. So just coming through like that, going over it. I did all the rest of it in 20% with the beads, don't forget the opacity. Even when you click and you put in a lighter colour, you can still blend it through like that. And just giving those brush strokes really adds nicely to it. It's coming across the other side as well. Again, clicking down using the, the lighter tone, just blending it in. And there it is, just coming, making sure, because I've missed being a bit sloppy, because I'm rushing. And just finishing off on this part one other thing I wanted to show you when it comes to if we just pop up using the spacebar to zoom up here at the lips I'm just going to drop the size of the brush right down as we did with the eyes if you press the letter I pick up the color of the lips like this now press the letter R and now coming across and just blending that through like this and again just pulling it back and forth and you can help just to sort of blend that color that looks pretty good like that right this cunning plat oh you see it made a bit of a just using command z control z to go back what you can always do as well if you want to is pick up the black from the background like this now press r and just click down over like that area like this and now just blend it in and um, but those darker tones in coming through you can just bring it in like that so just working its way around using command zero control zero to go out to fit on screen for the next stage we're going to duplicate this layer again using command j control j we're going to change the blend mode to overlay
watch what happens gives it a really nice effect now you might decide that you want to leave it like this because I must be honest I do like the way this works in fact I like it so much what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer using command J control J so I've duplicated it again but I'm going to switch it off we're going to come back to this layer so this is the original one we did we're going to take it up to 100% we're going to come to filter other we're going to go to high pass we're going to click on high pass now it's with the high pass filter because that's the way it looks and you can see if we start to bring this up the way we can begin to get even more detail out of the picture and this is the cunning plan that I thought and I, I just love the way that you can get it and it just you get an area where it just seems to all pop in together nicely just back there and click OK to that looks pretty good what you can also do is if you drop down we can put in a hue saturation adjustment layer and you can see we can take it up change my mind there but you couldn't tell right bring it up like that looks pretty good and there it is we can still come to the layers panel we can still click on this layer here and we can still come in and if there's any areas that you want to sort of change or adjust for example this part here is not looking particularly good for some reason if I just come in if we pick up a color from let's go for a skin tone like that there pressing the letter R I can now come in and I can just paint over this and blend it in we're working through these layers here so it's working through that hue, sat hue saturation through to this layer here so it just allows you to come in and you can just add in little bits and pieces just blending that through a bit like that coming down yeah I didn't do a very good job on this did I? No that's because I can come in and I can do it again pressing the letter I pressing the letter R clicking over that a few times just to darken that right down and over that area there darkening that down now blending it in and there it is and it's little finishing touches which are going to make all the difference just coming round just spotted that bits there and you will as you start to go through the picture you'll begin to find little areas I'm using a completely different color now I'm using this black but you can use the black just to emphasize things and to blend it in with the color. I must be honest I cannot paint you know, if I do a skirting board, that's about as near to the straight line as I can get when I'm painting. And that's with help. But th this is just brilliant. And I just love the way you can sort of add colours, take colours away. You can sort of blend in colours. Get this look coming through here. And it's just, there it is like that great stuff there you are there's the finished image or you may prefer this one entirely up to you in fact you can use them all together like this if I bring this in so let's take a quick look this is what we started off with our pirate image we then put in a painterly background we've added that oil paint effect doing it ourselves using the smudge tool sharpened it up a little bit and you can see the way this w uh, layer works together I'll tell you what let's move the whole thing out to the center might help and then we brightened it up using the color there but don't forget we've also put in this layer I've kept this layer and you can also reduce down the opacity on this blending this into everything you can blend together really like this effect let's zoom in let's take a look at it at 100 percent yeah there's some little finishing touches I can do with this but so really pleased with the effect of it looks pretty good go on give it a try until the next time it's happy imaging and take care